Hello, my name is James Lewis and I'm the Operations Manager for Aquitas Solutions. Here at Aquitas, we specialize in Maximo Enterprise Asset Management software and support many clients from the initial purchase and install of Maximo through advanced integrations and IoT functionality to gain the highest ROI from their assets. One of the many challenges we face with new or existing clients is the accurate management of licensing within Maximo. Up until Maximo 7.6, complex database queries were required to stay in compliance, although now they've added the license usage monitor application. Today, I will be providing a brief overview of the application. The purpose of the license usage monitor application is to allow organizations a means to track license usage in your Maximo to ensure compliance with your licensing agreement. It was first released with version 7.6.05 and has had several updates to the application making it more user friendly sense. Although there are still some required configurations that are necessary to ensure it's working properly and I'm going to cover some of these here today. While setting up this application won't fix licensing issues or control access, it will allow you to better maintain and follow your licensing agreement and determine what combination of licenses work best for your organization. Several topics I will discuss are the security access required to access the application, reviewing the application security list, creating license records for core Maximo and industry solutions, custom and duplicated applications, setting up a cron task, reports, and finally the logs for troubleshooting. Now I'm going to go into the demo. So here I'm logged into <clears throat> Let's see. So here I'm logged into our Maximo Sandbox environment. The license usage monitor application is located in the administration module. If you don't see this module, you're going to have to update your security privileges. Typically, your Maximo administrator will be able to do this for you. Additionally, the license usage monitor will require its own security access, just like any other application within a security group. You'll need to have full privileges for this application to set it up. Now I'm going to open the license usage monitor. <clears throat> the first thing I'd like to point out is under more actions. Under more actions, I have the application access list. I'm going to go ahead and open this up. This creates a dialogue. It opens up a dialogue for the applications that are in Maximo. In our environment, we have the Maximo industry solution transportation installed along with scheduler and calibration with the core Maximo application. Here in this list, I'm able to see all the different applications that are installed, what modules they exist in, the application name, the description that we know them by, and then, but, but really what I'd like to point out are these last five columns. Here it shows me what level of access a self-service license has or an express license user has limited or an authorized. To demonstrate this, if I go to the application description and I type in create, it'll show my create service request and it shows my self-service user has full access along with all my paid licenses here to the right. Next one I'm gonna look at is work order tracking. When I look at work order tracking, Notice it has no access for our self-service user, but we have full access as an express user. And same with a limited and an authorized user. Go to assets. I'll see that my self-service and express, my self-service has no access, my express has read, my limited users have read, and then my authorized have full access. What this shows here is this part of three module. Limited uh, licensing in Maximo, you're able to have three of 12 identified uh, modules within Maximo. What this box denotes is that this is one of those 12 modules in which a limited license can have access to. Remember, a limited license cannot be used for setting up Maximo and doing base configurations, although you can access core modules such as purchasing assets, um, work order tracking, etc. This checkbox just denotes that those modules are the ones for limited access. If you have more than three modules that have this checkbox here, that's how we uh, that that will create an authorized license type. So I'm going to close this, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up and show you my 
licenses here. So I've already had mine configured, and once you've got them configured here, they're here. So what I'm going to do is show you how to modify one. It's the same as if I create a new license. So if I go ahead and hit create, this is where I'd enter it. There's three pieces of information that we need. One is the product name, our license type, and then our quantity. That's the base information that we need to set one of these up. I'll show you real quick. So if I go to my product and I go to my core Maximo product, and if I try to create another authorized, actually I'm gonna roll back real quick. If I open up this value list, it shows me the five different products that we have installed on this environment for our Maximo. Once again, it's our anywhere, our uh, core product, calibration, transportation industry solution, and our Maximo scheduler add-on. So I selected our core product, and then I'm gonna look at my license type, and it brings up all the different valid license types. The ones that we typically work with are our authorized, our express, and our limited. Now, if I go ahead and I attempt to click authorized, it's gonna tell me that I cannot, that we have a, already have a combination of the product name and license type, and it must be unique. So what it's saying is I've already set a license up and it's already in the active state. So I'm gonna head and close. And what I'm gonna do is hit cancel. And I'm gonna go back to my list view. And here you can see that I already have the Maximo core product and it's already authorized set up. I'm gonna go into my express one. I have my express one in draft. So once again, I have my core product, I have my express, and then down here under purchase details, I have 20 for my licenses that I purchased. But I can also go ahead and hit new row and say that I purchased three more at another time. Go ahead and hit save. And now what that's gonna do is give me a total of 23 licenses. Once I have this set up, I hit save. And what this does is it generates my application access list on this next tab. The application access list is very similar to the dialogue that we popped up before, except for you'll notice that we have 240 applications on this list, but we only have 162 here. The reason why is, I didn't mean to click on that, the reason why is we selected the core Maximo product. So with the core Maximo product, only 162 applications come in. Now, if you have custom applications or duplicated applications, we need to add those manually. The way that we add these manually is by clicking new row, and then down here, I'm gonna go ahead, select my product. I'm gonna select the module in which it exists. And I'm gonna go to my application name and I've created a duplicate application called assets test. Now, just because it's, even if it's the exact same as the core module, users that have access to this application will not show up on this license record until I add this duplicate application to the list. So the easiest way is if it's a duplicated asset is to look at the core asset up here and you'll see that the access level is set to read save and it's limited, um, available for a limited license. So I'm gonna go, go over here, I'm gonna go to my access level and then click read save. And then down here, I'm gonna check my box for available for limited license. Now you do the same steps for a custom application following license IBM's licensing rules as well for any custom applications that you create. Once I add, uh, once I've selected my limited license, I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And now it's added it to this list. Notice with our duplicate or custom applications, I can delete these as well. Once I have my application list set up for my user and for all, intend to represent my Maximo. So I have all my custom applications, I have all my duplicate applications. Now what I'm gonna do is change status. I'm gonna go ahead and change my status to active. And I'm gonna hit okay. When I go back to list view, it still has the old data of 20 and two, but that's because I haven't run my data collection settings. The very first time that you run this, these, this line will be blank. So I'm gonna to go to my data collection settings and I open it up. And now here I can set the frequency of this cron task. Here I'm gonna use two minutes. 
hit OK. And I'm going to check the box for active, and I'm going to hit OK. Now the cron task is active, and it'll be running every two minutes. So while we wait for this cron to run, I'm going to show you the Maximo industry solution. So just like the setup for the core Maximo, the difference is, is up here under the product name. We're going to select Maximo for transportation. Here I select my authorized group or my authorized license. I selected how many uh, licenses I've purchased and what it does. And once I hit save, it's going to generate my application list. Once again, you'll notice there's only 206 of the 240 applications. So even if it's authorized, it still doesn't have all of the applications in here. So if you have a user that has access to an at one of these 34 other applications, we will need to add that application to this list. If if this application list doesn't perfectly match the access that your users have in a security group, they will not register under license use. So once that runs, if I go to license use, so when the cron test runs and it generates, and it calculates out our, uh, um, let me go back to one that has it. So once it runs and it calculates, what it shows is our license usage data. This data down here in this section, is generated from our, our cron task. So we have 10 licenses, 10 licenses. We have five deployed and a variance of five. So we're under licensed here. If I go to my license use tab, it's gonna show me the five individuals that calculated out as a limited user. Let me go ahead. I'm also gonna show you one other thing. I'm gonna to go to the user's application. So if I have access to the user's application, another way to see what type of license they're using is I could open up my, my username, and if I scroll all the way down to the bottom, there's a section now called licenses used, and then that populates with what calculated license this user is calculated out to. I'm gonna go back to my license usage monitor, and go back to my list view, and I'm gonna refresh. Now I'm gonna open up this express, and now I know that this ran again, because now I have my 23 users, it shows me I have four licenses deployed and a variance of 19. Here are my four users. So that's the basics of setting up the license record. So the big, the big pieces here were setting it up for the core solutions. Another thing that we have to do is don't try to set this up one at a time and run it and look for results. You need to set up all three levels. So you need to set up your, at your core level, you need to set up the limited, express, and authorized. If you have any industry solutions, you need to set up both industry solutions and then turn on the crons. Otherwise, what will happen is everybody will calculate into that group and you'll be you'll show as vastly over licensed until you add the other license groups here. That's another that's a, a quick one that we run into. The next thing is ensuring that those duplicate applications are added to the list. So this application list must accurately match your security group settings and have all app custom applications, duplicated a applications, or any admin applications added for your user to properly calculate out. <clears throat> and then the other thing I'd like to show you is the reports. So if we look at the reports for this application, out of the box, we have the license usage detail report and the license usage summary history. The one I find the most use is the license usage detail history. When I open this up, it gives me the license use date. Now I can run this for a past date. Maximo saves up to two years of data collection stats. Now that can be updated in system properties, but for now I'm gonna show you the current one which is 476. And then I have two parameters here. So parameter two, which is include self-service users. I'm gonna go ahead and click yes. And then include security groups for users. I'm gonna go ahead and click yes as well for this report and this demo. I'm gonna go ahead and hit submit. And this is gonna generate my report. Now for all active licenses and license records that I've created, you'll see them listed here at the bottom with a quick uh, summary status showing you if you're under license or over license. It 
It also gives you the nice bar chart for visual. On the second page, it starts to break down each one of those license types and show you the users that are registered to that group. Now what I'm going to show you next is that second parameter that we selected, which was self-service users. So if we selected Y on that second parameter, it's going to bring up all the self-service users that are part of our system. Next, it'll show me the, second, the third parameter that I added was the security groups. So by adding that third parameter, it has brought in all the security groups for the different users that I have. Going back, one thing I'd like to point out is when we go to run this report is we have to select this date. Now this isn't very useful if we need to make this recurring report. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit cancel. And one thing that we've done at Aquitas is we've taken this license usage report and we've set it up so we can run this as a scheduled report. We have the same two parameters to include self-service users or security groups. But what this allows us to do is to run it as a recurring report where it is emailed out to us weekly so we can get a weekly snapshot of what our license licensing looks like. This has been very popular amongst our clients. I'm going to cancel. I'm not going to run that now. It's the same report. It just uses the current data settings. So finally, if you're running into issues where you're not having all your licenses or your users calculate out to a license, um, the last thing to check is the logs. So if I go to the logging application, and under the logger, I'm going to search for the lice track. And this will bring up my lice track logger. If I set this to debug, in the system properties file, what it's going to do is show a list of all applications that can cause the users to be unlicensed. In the log file, this will be referred to as the not part of any license. So this will generate in your log file and it will list out by user and show what applications are missing or causing them not to um, exist on one of these license groups. Now, once again, that's the lice track logger located in the debug. I'm not going to turn on that right now. And I'm just going to go back to my license usage, usage monitor. And once again, here's the application. This concludes my demo. So in summary, we have covered the license usage monitor application, how to set up the license records, run reports, and finally troubleshoot the applications. Should you run into issues on setup, IBM has several support articles listed at the link shown, or you can reach out to Aquitas Solutions for further configurations of this application, additional license pur purchases, or general maximum configuration. I hope this helps you and your organization to better track and manage your licenses, and please reach out if you have any questions.